Hey, so today I just got this, the Art and Arcana of Visual History. So this is the Dungeons & Dragons kind of art book that got dropped uh, this last week. And I've seen, a, I've seen it around a bunch. Uh, folks got the, um, the other version of it, uh, which looks gorgeous. has all the content, the 400 some odd pages of it. But I, I had to go in for the big dog. I had to go in for the, uh, the big deluxe edition. And I wanted to kind of take a look at it and unbox it real quick, uh, get some of my initial reactions, uh, stuff like that, uh, and the like. So let me go ahead and flip this over, uh, or kind of describe it. But as you can see, it's kind of a, done in archival box style. Um, these, this reminds me a lot of uh, kind of what you would see in the archives at UCLA and the libraries and the vaults. Uh, with rare books would be held inside these, uh, but they look like books on the shelf. And uh, the back of it, let me give a quick read uh, and kind of explain this, which kind of explains what differentiates, uh, makes this different than the, the other version. Uh, from one of the most iconic game brands in the world, this official Dungeons & Dragons illustrated history provides an unprecedented look at the visual evolution of the brand, showing its continued influence on the world of pop culture and fantasy. Inside the book, you'll find more than 700 pieces of artwork from each edition of the core role-playing books, supplements, and adventures, Forgotten Realms, Dragonlance novels, decades of Dungeons & Dragons magazine, classic advertisements, merchandise, and never be, uh, before seen stuff like that. But the real trick here is at the bottom, it says, additionally, and this is what sold me on it, this special edition package includes recreations of classic Dungeons & Dragons artwork ready for framing, as well as a pamphlet-sized, unpublished original version of the game's most infamous adventure module and Death Trap Tomb of Horrors, written by Dungeons & Dragons co-creator Gary Gygax himself. And that's what sold me, was that there is a... Um, Two of Horrors has been republished and reprinted, but apparently from my understanding that the authors of this book in their research found um, the uh, kind of an unpublished version that Gygax had proposed. I, I think it was done, I mean, probably knowing him, it's probably just done in a bunch of binders and such. Um, but it had different art, I know, and uh, it looked really interesting. So that's what sold me on this. I'm a big Two of Horrors fan. So I'm going to get a nice spine picture here too as well. So you kind of see it. It's nice, nice kind of inlay, bronze and the like. Um, so let's open this up. So once again, I said this kind of opens up like an archive book. And there you go. We got the nice dragon on the front. So here's our book um, in all its glory, the main traction. That guy's pretty darn big. Ooh, the fun little mimic on the back. I like that. I can see that being a tattoo, actually. I'm really digging that a lot. Um, nice spine and the such. And then we have all this kind of uh, accoutrement over here. Um, nice elastic band inlay. Kind of a classic... Um, Reminds me a lot of, um, I guess, I guess I've had supplies come like this from like a textbook, something like that. So I think they did a bang up job on this. Nice sealed piece. So according to it, this is supposed to have the um, frame, the pieces that can be framed, the art, the art, and then uh, the adventure. So at the top of it, we have our Tomb of Horror 75 tournament module. And uh, let's see what we got in here. Classic information. Nice typed up. So it's really uh, done in that classic kind of style. Looks very basic. Um, oh yeah, wow. You can see it's all faded still for probably the original copies they could find. And it has this, these illustrations in it, which to me are mind boggling. Um, <laughs> they look like they, they were done on a, um, uh, some sort of replicator machine that's fairly primitive uh, by our standards nowadays, but lots of il illustrations. Um, and we can see, the uh, green faced devil, the form gargoyle, these iconic pieces, but done in a very different style than what we what we end up seeing later on. But the the feelings there. There's the three chests. <laughs> classic, classic. So yeah, I'm very I'm very. This is a lot of fun. Uh, maps and such. I like this classic art style. It's just a blast. So very cool. I've got some uh, looks like some handwritten notes, um, appendices attached to it. This is great. I'm definitely gonna look forward to going through this and kind of seeing what uh, made it and didn't make it. Um, for our little pieces here, we have a um, nice little, uh, pretty small little sheets, but they're, they're really well printed, um, and I'm kind of digging them. I can see doing these in like a uh, uh, frame setup, or like with a few of them in there. So they, they are, they're all curated at the back. So this one says the cover painting for the Keep in the Borderlands. Um, here we have, oh, I should know this one. Jeez, I remember seeing this as a kid. I haven't seen it for decades. World of Greyhawk, yeah, by Jeff Easley. Wow, 83. Great piece. I know this one. Now, I know this one from the cover of Eye of the Beholder 2, I believe it was. 
but it was used a lot. Uh, Swords of Deceit by Keith Parkinson, 86. Uh, this one, uh, this was always one of my favorites as a kid. This was in the, was this in the PHB, I believe? The PHB 2nd Edition? Um, or uh, Elmore piece, yeah. Interior painting from 2nd Edition, yeah. And then we got a few more pieces in here too, which looks like, these are all kind of fold out posters. Of some sort, so we have, oh wow. That's a 3rd Edition piece, yeah. With all some of the iconic characters, Lita, uh, Mila Lee, Forge of Fury cover piece. Let's see what else we got in here. This is a great. This is a piece of the Players Handbook in '78. Oh wow, yeah, the uh, old cover. Jeez, another iconic piece. These are great. They're hitting all the hits here, guys. Oh yeah, this brawl from um, this was 3.5 or fourth. I can't remember. 2004 for the 30th anniversary. Todd, Todd Blackwood. Yeah, a great piece too. I see this one used a lot. Um, let's see here. The Fiend Folio. Yeah, that full art's kind of a trip. Uh, you know, we're always used to seeing this piece on the cover, but then you have this kind of invisible uh, astral uh, gith coming out. And I love the sword and the skull, too. That's a blast. That's a possible tattoo, too. <laughs> um, let's see here. This one. A little bifold. Ooh, big. Oh, wow. Now, this one I'm not familiar with. Pieces, it looks... What is this one? Stuart painting for the Dungeon Master screen in 79. Yeah. Wow. I think I've seen this from afar, but not up close. Not this, like, high detail. This is pretty sweet. Very cool. And then our last... I think we have one more piece here. Oh, this one's big. This is the interior painting of Storm, Storm King's Thunder. So this is a newer one. Oh yeah. Wow. Fantastic. So yeah, so you get a cool a few cool bonus pieces. Um, uh, I could see framing a few of these maybe up. It wouldn't be too expensive. You could buy, I could buy frames for them, honestly, uh, not have to do a custom job unless I want to have multiple ones in there. But this is the real selling point for me. And this, I think this retailed for 125. I managed to pre-order on Amazon. I think I paid once, or I think I paid 75 for it, so it wasn't too bad of a price increase over the basic edition for all the cool little pieces here. Not to mention the uh, the sweet little box, um, which is something that like I just dig. I, I think it'll look good on the shelf, uh, and I'm really I'm really just, I like having the full blown kind of package. Um, I don't want to say I like to go overboard, but I like I really respect a well uh, printed and presented uh, book and document. So let's go ahead and see what we got in here though with the the book itself um lovely inlay this is the is that um i guess that's what's his name hydro what's his i always forget the artist name but yeah, look at these great great old easily pieces great table contents um we got uh maggiano's piece here with his arkin uh painting his wife got him uh love that piece love it uh do they have a Maybe it's a little farther in. Maybe past the introduction. All the folks talking about kind of the uh, the build up to it. Um, I was wondering if they had like who did the. Uh, oh, here we go. The back of it. Um, let's see cover. I was gonna see who did that first. First, who did that cover on there? So, huh. but yeah, I'm liking. You know, it, it seems like a great piece. Definitely have to dig through this. Um, read it. Uh, and like this is a great kingdom illustrations uh this is interesting though, the inspirations here looking at like stuff from um uh jim steranko art like I'm a, I'm a big steranko fan and that's i'm pretty positive the steranko piece which is also kind of derived from kirby so there's a lot going on talking about how they uh they pulled this art from different comics and everything um which doesn't which doesn't uh surprise me uh jim steranko is like one of these guys that's just hyper influential and will be for ever because he's just riveting but i've always liked this kind of basic art too um i liked how it was done to be done like there it is it's 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 into it so i'm really interested in reading though about how they kind of approached artists initially um where they drew influence from how they budgeted for it uh etc but they have a lot of cool uh, kind of showing the evolution of different characters azarak from tome of horrors that's great uh 78 78 78 to 98 you know so it, 2014 2017 um 
yeah, I'm, I'm fascinated by this stuff. So this will be a real blast to go through. But this is after this is, from my understanding, is pretty much the straightforward uh, set. Braum piece, I know that one. Um, the Dark Sun stuff's great. The Rule Cyclopedia art, I, I remember seeing this as a kid, loving that artwork. Um, the Evolution of the Dragons, how they started making dragons more cat-like. I thought it was really fascinating, third edition. Um, which makes a lot of sense. Hollow World, geez, I haven't looked at this for a while. Different flares. The Tenari, the DMG. Uh, second edition cover, um, some of the art from the games. Oh, I mean, no, this is gonna be here. This is great stuff in the old gold box games. Um, yeah, I'm really into this. Wow, cool. So yeah, I'm 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 super stoked to go through all this. Actually, I'm really excited to have my wife kind of look at it because she's an art uh, educator. Oh, it's Al Kadeen. This is I've been trying. To, I really every time someone brings up like what should we publish again, what should we bring back, I'm like Al Kadeen. I really want to play in, like a. a, a Arabian Nights type setting. Uh, I think it's fascinating. I think that it would it would go over really well. Um, but yeah, wow, I'm glad to see that in there. So yeah. Oh my God, the Tower of Doom. This one's great too because I have I actually have this marquee, the original marquee from the arcade game in my uh, Dungeon Dragons room, and it's one of my favorite pieces I have in here. And this art uh, is great. You know, Capcom games back then were producing some of the best art, and I think uh, Dungeon Dragons Tower of Doom and then uh, Shadow of Mistara follow up are probably two of the best of their beat-em-up games ever uh, in terms of complexity, graphics, storyline, uh, replayability, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, I remember, this is, this is I'm going to nostalgia hard tonight on this, guys. So, But yeah, hey, thanks for uh, keeping up here. Um, check out my blog, Only Play Wizards. I'm trying to keep it a little more update, up to date, and I'll probably keep you up to date on our game. I'm hoping to do a post soon about um, the state of my game and my house rules and kind of how they've hammered out in the last... Uh, Years since we've been playing. Oh, the managers. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. I'll let you guys go. Thank you so much.